Today I want to give you an update on a few of my most recent projects. The uh, TP camera, the uh, wireless uh, smart buttons, and the uh, little irrigation uh, project, or DIY irrigation system I put together. I'm Blake, a professional innovator and designer in pursuit of the invisible smart home. Water leak alert. Before I get to uh, the updates on this stuff here, I just, uh, I'm excited about our new gate lock. I just wanted to give you a little teaser. Our smart uh, gate lock. You can't see it well from here, but it's up there and I'm going to walk up in a minute. But I can uh, lock and unlock with this little wireless uh, button. This happens to be a Z-Way version, but there's lots of options for that. I'm going to lock it now and you should hear it click. Hope you heard that. And now I'm going to unlock it. All right, and let's just go check it up close. I happen to have it mounted on the inside, but you can mount it on the outside. It's going to be very secure. This is a pre production version. Put this somewhere in the yard. Now it's locked. Can open it. And this has nothing to do with the internet. And that's just showing it working this bar has a cool option because it rotates and comes in and out and you can slide it up and down to adjust for just about any fence this is nice and slim so it can mount on a fence like this or a wooden fence um, I have a button here for locking and unlocking you know neighbors and family I can just unlock it with this or lock it you can use it with your phone and with an app to lock it, unlock it, set schedules. And these buttons that I'm going to have as remotes, you can disable or, en or enable those. And I'm calling that super lock mode. Like say you're away on vacation, you might set it to super lock to disable that. And we're hoping to have pre-production units available in the next uh, six weeks or so. And I'm very excited about it. First, let's talk about the, uh, the TAPO camera. I had them running for a couple weeks. I have one in the front of my property and one in the back. And I liked it so much I bought a third. This is a 2K version, so I'm going to give that a try and do some more testing. What impressed me the most was the, uh, the lack of false triggers. It seems to be more sensitive and maybe it's they have some AI in there to do with the shadows and light that uh, changes out throughout the day. It wasn't perfect, but it was much better than my, uh, my Blink cameras and my Samsung cameras. and three or four other cameras that I've used. So I like, it seems to be, uh, maybe in general, they're making improvements on this false trigger that most people have an issue with when you have them outside. I played around a bit with the AI where you have to have a subscription um, where they can detect a crying baby. I didn't do the crying baby thing, but you can detect people. It doesn't do face detection, but it knows the difference between, I guess, a cat, a car, and a person. And it, you can set alerts for, for people. Um, you can't pick a motion zone for the people once you set the alert on for people um, with the subscription. Um, if people go by anywhere within the camera's view, it uh, gives you notification, and that's not really necessarily a problem. It would have been nice if you could limit it to an area so that if somebody you know, doesn't walk up to your gate or your garage and it just happens to be walking by within view, it would have been nice if they could just reduce it to a limit, uh, you know, a zone that you selected. It's very responsive in terms of timing. Um, you would get a notification and you could get rich uh, notifications with the subscription. You would click on it and boom, within uh, three or four seconds you would be watching the, uh, the video and that was pretty good. Um, so let me just show you a couple shots of the cameras and uh, so you can see what they think. And I'm going to be testing uh, this one in 2K for a special project that I'll be talking about in another video. You can see there's lots going on here in terms of uh, potential false triggers. We've got the uh, whirly gig, the pool water moving, there's balls there, floating uh, light balls, and, and the hot tub that move, the shadows and the uh, light from the plants and so on. Um, but I had it running for a couple weeks now, and uh, I think I've had zero false triggers. I've set up a couple zones, you know, in between uh, in pieces of uh, furniture and plants and so on 
And uh, every time I catch uh, somebody coming in or out of the yard and uh, zero false triggers. I had similar success in the, with the camera in the back with uh, zero false triggers. Um, and I also, uh, the quality was good enough to zoom in on the license plates. I hope uh, it's not good enough by the time it translates here to YouTube, but that was cool. Um, in my case, I just sent a motion zone uh, in the end around that concrete pad there. So I only got it to the triggers when somebody came close. All right, so let's talk about the, um, the smart buttons, the wireless buttons. And I had a problem with the delay in the timing. You press the button and it might take um, one or two seconds to for the light to respond and the biggest reason for the delay at least the first second all right here's a quick uh, demonstration of the uh, delay this button here has to do with the way these buttons uh, work I wasn't blaming the uh, the buttons in my video but I am blaming the buttons now I've had a little bit more time to think about it and uh, test. Um, what happens when you push this and let go? It's looking, it's waiting a few seconds to see, not a few seconds, a few hundred milliseconds to see if you're going to click it again. Is that, does that guy, is that a single press or a double press or all the way up to five presses? Also, if you don't let go, it's timing it to say, you know, two or three hundred milliseconds. Is he holding this? So that's a press and hold, that's a different to function. Um, so that first press is always going to take six or seven hundred milliseconds longer before it sends the signal because it's looking for the second time you click it. But a way around that is, is to change the firmware in these units so that when you click it quickly, that's it. It says, okay, that guy pressed it within uh, three or four hundred milliseconds, pressed and released. I'm just going to send the signal. Um, to the Z-Wave controller or the Zigbee controller, whatever the case may be. And it's the same for battery-powered ones or you know, units that are actually AC-powered the way these buttons work. So a way to fix that is, is that when you click it quick, the firmware should just say, okay, I'm not waiting. He clicked that within uh, four or 500 milliseconds or whatever the timing is. Maybe you can get it down to 300 milliseconds. I'm not going to look for the, I'm not going to wait for him to maybe press it a second or third time. I'm just going to go ahead and send that signal to the uh, Z-Wave or Zigbee or Wi-Fi controller. Um, and then you could still have the multiple presses, but you would just have to be slower. So we, that would be like a two-press uh, opportunity, a two-press uh, signal. But what they could do in the firmware, is the, the quick one, boom, it sends it right away. But even if you did a slower version of that, it could still send that signal, but it would also be waiting for a second press. So that would kind of solve that problem with the buttons. That's something the designers of these switches uh, should implement. All right, now on to the valve. So I, you know, this is kind of a follow-up to my little irrigation controller I was building. Um, I went out and bought the cheapest valve I could find basically for this, and that turned out to be a mistake. I couldn't get this thing to seal. Um, it was leaking at the threads. So I'm not sure if there's something wrong with this or uh, it's just bad uh, manufacturer or bad design, but maybe it's something to do with the NPT. Maybe I could have used more Teflon tape. But in conclusion, um, price is not always a good indicator of uh, quality. On the plus side, you know, a $20 camera, or in this case, the new uh, 2K version, $24 camera, uh, is excellent quality so far for me, and uh, I am impressed with it. On the negative side, uh, you know, a $15 valve, maybe I should have spent the $25 valve, so it would have saved a lot of trouble because it uh, leaked. And I guess the final conclusion is, is that, you know, you don't really uh, can appreciate what's good and bad about a product until you've actually tested it for a bit. Uh, you know, now that I'm into it for two weeks for both the, uh, the button idea the camera and the DIY irrigation system, you know, I've learned a lot. All right, so give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, look for my next video. Cheers.